W Squared AV Talk with Demetrius Curry. Here's your gateway to discovering the formula to a more gratifying life with the accountability you need to start and stay energized, inspired, and on top. Author and wealth strategist Demetrius Curry is a nationally leading voice and go-to authority on insurance and financial literacy. Got questions about your finances, relationships, healthy living, or professional life? W Squared AV talks about it all, along with tips to enhance your overall well-being. W Squared AV Talk with Demetrius Curry. Hello, hello, everybody. This is Demetrius Curry coming to you with W Squared AV Talk Authors Unite. And I'm so excited to be here with you today because we have none other than Miss Darlene McCoy Jackson. Oh, we got some stuff to talk about today. We got some stuff to talk about today. But before we do, I want to say thank you all for listening in to W Squared AV Talk Authors Unite segment. Well, we are here today to talk about what the story is behind the book of work of this wonderful, amazing, extraordinary author. As you have been with us as this series has unfolded over the last year or so, you've learned more about what really happened to these authors behind the scenes and why did they feel that their book of work was so important to bring it to the forefront and to the papers that you can read across the globe. So today we are joined with none other than Miss Darlene McCore. I wanna say she is the most amazing gospel artist I have heard in years. And so I'm so excited to work with her. We've had a chance to meet years ago while we we're on the same platform. And I said, you know what? We gotta do some things together. Her and I gotta do some things together. So I'm going to bring her in today so we can learn about her new book that just released. And I'm so excited to even be a part of what she's doing and the industry. So, Miss Darlene, hello. Are you there, Miss Darlene? I am right here. And I am ah! like, wow, listen to that introduction. Ah! <laughs> I'm going to take you everywhere. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm so excited to have you here with us today. I was like, oh my God. So, it has been what years since you and I had a chance to do something together. That's right. It's what is it? It's probably three years now. Yeah, three, about three, four years. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. but it's good to see you. Yes. You. I'm, I'm so happy for what you are doing, especially for authors. As, as a new author, I can totally appreciate you so much for your work. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So it's, you know, what I wanted to do is I wanted to learn about other authors, yeah. Truly, because as an author myself, I said, you know what? I'm new to the industry as well as an author. I'm brand spanking new, right? Right. So I want to know what what created that that drive, you know, that love of of wanting to put it all on paper and and tell people about your story. But even beyond that, there is someone behind the story that just sort of unfolds, right? Mm -hmm. Layers and layers of life that we get a chance to learn. So you have been through a lot in your years as an industry. Oh, I ain't going to tell your story. I'm going to let you tell your story. But I know, but I know firsthand that not only have you done great things in the radio industry, okay, and the gospel artist industry, yes, but also recently given an uh, induction to the Hall of Fame. So excited for you. <laughs> Thank you. So excited for you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. You're I'm really excited about that. I and, and it just it came by surprise. I had no idea, you know, I gotta tell that story. That that happened after the book was written. So <laughs> wow. I wasn't able to put that in. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, it's extraordinary. You, you touch the lives of so many people, you know, just in, in your heart, in, in your soul, your spirit, you know, you just, you're real, you know what I mean? And, and I love you. I love you. I love you. I really do. Um, but I want to give you the floor and talk to us about this amazing book of work that you just brought out. And then she turned 50. <laughs> Yes, yes. And you know, Demetrius, when we were little kids, we looked at 
people at 50 and it's like, oh my God, they old. Oh my <laughs> God, they old. Oh. <laughs> Am I gonna ever get there? Please don't let me get there. <laughs> I'm, like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm probably gonna die before I'm 50. That kind of stuff. Like when we were kids, that was like 50 was just so old to us. But right. now, you know, turning 50, it's really crazy because I really feel like I'm at the be the beginning of real life still. Wow. Wow. Um, and although, you know, in the book, there are so many stories that that confirms I have lived a lot of life. I have. <laughs> I've been through a lot of things. I've learned a lot. The beauty, the beauty in turning 50 is I look back over my stories and I see all of the wisdom nuggets. I see um, what I couldn't see then I can see now. It's like hindsight is 2020. Right. And sometimes, you know, we go through things in our life, uh, our lives and, and we don't even understand why we're going through it. We don't we don't see our way through it. We don't know how we're going to come out of it, you know, and and so many of us carry stories and we just carry them, you know. But then if you just stop and look back and see how God had his hand on you and he just ordered all of your steps to be where they are. It's like so many full circle moments. You know, you, you go back and look and, and say, wow, um, I, I know I thought I was doing this, but God was doing that, you know, and that's basically what this book is, this, this book. And then she turned 50. Um, I, I have to say that first chapter is probably the longest chapter. You get through the first chapter, mm -hmm. then you're cool. You, you know, it's just, then there's little stories after that, yeah. but that first chapter gets you like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's so many stories in it because I actually started the story with my unbelief in God when I was a teenager. Um, I had some challenges understanding this whole thing. I was raised in church, you know, um, and uh, in a Christian home, loving family. You know how that's my mom and dad were Christians, and <laughs> raised in church, and it was just me and my brother, you know. And that's the story, you know, that everybody loves to gravitate to. Right. But what they didn't understand is that that I was born a rebel. Like, <laughs> I've always asked questions like, okay, but what does that mean? Like, why are you guys doing this? And, yes. but, um, but we, you know, when I was raised in church, I um, was raised right next door to my grandmother. It was my, my dad's mother. And she was like my best friend. You know, one of the mm -hmm. sweetest people in the world. She had, she just had a way about her that was just beautiful. She just, you know, um, but when she was, when, when I turned 13, you know, I was 13 years old when she passed away mm -hmm. and she went away in her sleep, you know, and I'll never forget that being raised in church, they say to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And that the only way that you're going to see Jesus is that you're sin free. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I was raised in a church where they'll tell you what sin is. And that's if you see people doing these sins, they're going to hell. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I heard my grandmother say a curse word before when she was upset. So I had this complex. I'm like, <laughs> if God sent my grandmother to hell because she said that that time. I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> I had a disdain. I was like, man, I don't want to hear that because things happen in my life and I don't mean to be sinning, but it happens. Right. So I'm doomed anyway. So I'm going to hell. So that was what in my head mm -hmm. because they preached like that right. and they did not teach the love of Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and what ended up happening to me is Later on, my brother went away to the Air Force. And, you know, I used to, and like I said, it was just the two of us. I would call his, I would call his phone. Mm -hmm. And he had this outgoing message from a group back then called Commissioned. They had a song called Only What You Do For Christ Will Last. And he would play that back. Like it was his outgoing message on his phone. So... I would call and listen to the song and go, wow. And I only wanted to hear the song. 
he would pick up and I'm like, hang up. Cause I was listening to the song. He was like, just get the, just go get the tape. So, but I, I started listening to commissioned and commissioned exposed me to other levels of God that I, that I wasn't exposed to in church. Cause when I was younger, I was drawn to the music. I was drawn to the spirit. I was drawn to the, you know, the cl hand clapping and all of this stuff. But I when, when it came to the pastor preaching, I was shut down. I'm like, ah, I don't want to hear that, you know. But then when I started listening to Commissioned, now back in that day, Commissioned was considered worldly gospel music because they didn't sound like the the the, the, the choirs. The hymns. Mm -hmm. So so it was like, what is that R and B sounding stuff you listen to? You don't listen to that. That's that is that blues? That kind of thing, right? So I, you know, they they were kind of skeptical about the whinings and commissioned and whatnot. But I heard something else. But that started to draw me into to a relationship. Yeah. God, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And so my relationship with God came through music. And it fast forward. Yeah. If I were to get into the kind of music that I do, I didn't, it wasn't until later in life that I look back and say, oh, that was God trying to show me then mm -hmm. that there is a such thing as an unorthodox way of getting to people through music, right? Through lyrics. And this is why in gospel music, we have to be so responsible with what we're doing and what we're mm -hmm. saying, because we have, we have actually, we have access to someone's soul. Why mm -hmm. was that song? So um, the kind of artist I became is the same kind of artist that commissioned was back then. And what's really a trip, and I didn't write this in the book, you know, because I'm actually remembering this now as I'm talking to you, is when I put out my first record, I remember we had MySpace back then? Yeah, yeah. I remember getting a DM on MySpace from Fred Hammond. And I was probably one of their biggest fans at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. And he said, I've been listening to your music and you have a special gift. Mm. And I've been blessed by it. Keep going. He just encouraged me. And I was like, this ain't Fred Hammond for real. <laughs> you said that ain't him for real. Mm -mm. And he says, I hear you live in Atlanta. I am going to be rehearsing my choir. You should come by the rehearsal. I'm like, the only way <laughs> that ain't no friend. What are you talking to me for? <laughs> yeah. What you, what, you, what, you talk, what you talking about? <laughs> so, so, uh, you know, at that time I, you know, I had three little kids and my husband and I was like, Hey, let's see if this is Fred for real. So he sent the address. Wow. We pulled up. I peeped in that door. I went, that's him for real. <laughs> See, it is him. It is him. <laughs> All of that stuff was him. He was serious for real. So it was just a, it was a it was a big deal to me. And um, but now, you know, God has placed me. Mm -hmm. And and if, when you read the book, you'll see how he placed me in radio. Oh, I'm, I, waiting on, I'm waiting on my signed copy. You know how. Oh, I yeah, do. I got you. <laughs> oh, I got you. Oh, I got you. Covered. But in the book, you see how it, I was placed in gospel music. I did not even mm -hmm. want to be there. I didn't even want to be in, in radio. I never wanted to do it. But it was presented to me and I tried it. And I'm still here and about to be inducted into the National Black Radio Hall of Fame. Girl. God, God will do some things with your life. He will. He will. Yes, mm, yeah. And you find you and you find yourself in places you were not trying to be, but you have the gift. It's it's like your gift will make room, make for, room you. for you. Yes. Oh, girl, I just got chills on that one. I'm telling you, it yes. will make room for you. And I'm like, you know, God, I. I don't really want to be doing this right here. <laughs> right, right. And then the next I, morning you get up, rise and shine. I'm at it again, you know, but it's, it's your <laughs> gift because he didn't implant it in you. He's imparted it in you. Exactly. And it's, it becomes part of your DNA. And you don't even know that, you know, that's what's going on with you at that time. 
Yeah. It's just that it's just infused in you. You know what I mean? It's in you. And 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 it's infused in you. And mm -hmm. when we look at the the thing that we always say that our steps are ordered, God knows when to place us on a step, yeah. how long to keep us on a step, mm -hmm. what to do with us while we're on a step, and then when we're mature enough to move to the next step. Mm. Totally ordered. You know what I mean? So, so I, receive, I receive that. Yeah, I, re I receive that. I'm I'm receiving it as you you, you told that to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, re <laughs> I receive that because a lot of times when you're trying to level up, yeah, and you're trying to go to the next level, and you're trying to the what path, Lord, guide my footsteps. Yeah, and the path that you shall have me go. And you're like, okay, Lord, do I go on this row, this side mm -hmm. row, or mm -hmm. that side row? I'm, am I going to get to the same destination, or do you have a detour that you want me to go to before I get mm -hmm. there? You, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, I found that even when I fight against him, mm -hmm. he still gets me to the same destination he had already planned for me. That's exactly because I'm like, I'm like, Lord, you said that last year, but I didn't know I had to go through these detours to get there. <laughs> And that's something. And God, was, He knows how long you need to be in a place. He knows yeah. when your assignment is over. He has orchestrated everything about our lives. He knows the plans He has for us, and they are to prosper us and give us an expected end. Yeah. But we've got to be able to let it happen. You know, I didn't. I never thought that I'd be writing my stories, mm. and I never thought that I would be. You know, I didn't know how. I, I I was just carrying them, you know. We mm -hmm. carry our stories. Yeah. We and do. as as a first time author, this is my first time putting out a book. What I found out <laughs> first time, because I'm gonna do it again. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I can't yes. believe we're going through this at the same time. I'm like, yeah. Same time. Yeah. At the same time, D. And here's the thing, like when I wrote the stories and got them out, it was as if, you know how it is when you clean your house mm -hmm. and you just feel that, okay, have you ever like cleaned out your closet and just saw like, now it's time for me to go buy some new clothes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got some more space in this corner that needs some. I got some space. <laughs> yes. I've been carrying all of those stories for so long. Yes. And and then as I was releasing the stories, it was like the Holy Spirit was like, what if Paul would have never released the stories? Ooh. Ooh. He wrote the stories. But what if he would have just held on to them for himself? You know what I mean? Yeah. What, and then, what, what, who would we be at this time? And then you start to think you can help somebody else. That's right. Because what we are writing are references. Mm -hmm. These are references, you know, and, and especially like in this book, these are references that God is real. And some people can relate to a lot of the things that we say in, in, in our books and the things that we say when they're reading. That's actually another medium of communication that God is using to speak mm -hmm. to someone else's heart, you know. And, and just as he's did, he's did the same thing in the scriptures, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What if they would have decided, all right, I'm too old. I'm not going to write. <laughs> you know what I mean? Girl, girl we won't have no guidance. So you let me, know. let me, let me, let me ask you saying? this. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Because someone asked me this the other day, because I, I started writing Brighter Days Ahead in 2012. Yeah. 2012 and just decided to start releasing it. And someone asked me, they said, hey, what did you learn about yourself in that process? Oh, that's so good. What did you learn about yourself in that process? And I, I learned that I'm forever evolving. I am so different than I used to be. Yeah. I've learned more, I've matured more, I see things differently. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and, you know, in, in the book, it ranges from age six to where I am now, right? So, of course, mm -hmm. it gives you that idea of, you know, a six-year-old's mindset, a teenager's yeah. mindset, a, you right. know what I'm saying, 20s mindset. But when you get to where we are now, knocking mm -hmm. on some wood over here, <laughs> <laughs> then, then the way you see things are so differently. And I wouldn't change a thing. Change a thing. 
I want you to be refined. It's like you've been through a refinery and yeah. and and you you earned this this woman that you are now. Mm. You, you know what I mean? You earned that and I love it and I appreciate every storm. I appreciate yeah. you know every mistake I made. Mm -hmm. Every mistake I made wasn't even a mistake. Stay right there, Pastor. Look, stay right there, Pastor. <laughs> Ain't that what they say? Stay right there, Pastor. Stay right there, Pastor. Everything that I thought was a mistake just wasn't a mistake. It wasn't really a mistake. It was a, just a part of my story. That's right. And, right. That's and right. when you carry those stories and then you let them go, you appreciate the good. You appreciate the bad. You yeah. appreciate the hard times because you see how, what it did to you. What mm -hmm. it made you become, you know, if it was always such a good time all the time and everything mm -hmm. was just so was a, a bed of roses all the time, then you would not be as resilient as you are, you know? And, you know, and, and it's the funny part is it part of my story is I grew up in a domestic violence home, as you know, yes. and you and I had that conversation off off camera. Hello. Yes. Like yes. But <laughs> we didn't realize we had that in common that we yeah. had that history. And so just in girlfriend conversation, what I learned is it made me not only stronger, but it also made my senses more acute mm. of listening to people's conversation, mm. of listening to uh, tones, yeah. to listening to uh, actions versus what you're saying, mm -hmm. um, demeanors, yeah. Um, you understand what I'm saying? Characters, integrity, mm -hmm. um, all those things became so much more crisp yeah. from that experience. Um, it taught me what I wanted and did not want in a mate. Yes. You, you see what I'm saying? Um, what it does he address me properly? Does he love me properly? Does he, you know, attentive to me? Is is he yeah. aware of, of my of my wants and my needs? Is does he care about mm -hmm. my wants and my needs? Um, all those things, right? When you're thinking about building relationships and building love and and, and building just friendships, mm -hmm. of the tone a person has with you, mm -hmm. the conversation they have with you. Are you worth the conversation in their in their voice? Mm. Have you Ooh, ever had that? Sure, that's serious. Have Are you, you worth the conversation in their voice? In their voice. Does their voice say, I want to hear from you? Mm. Or I adore you? Or I want to hear what you have to say? Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it taught me that. Mm -hmm. It truly, truly did. Because I remember growing up seeing not just in my family, but other wives that had spouses that did not have any type of attention towards their spouse, right. did not care whether they were okay. If they in, beat up on them in one word and then say, I love you in another word, you, you see what I'm saying? And Absolutely. so really it was about control. It wasn't about really about knowing and loving who you are as a person. Yeah. And so when I started to date and get out there and learn things, and have build relationships, even with other women, their yeah. tone. It says um, everything. It says everything. Their conversation, their demeanor, the way they shake it off, like I'm more than you. Mm. Mm. All of that came mm. into a place. You, you understand what I'm saying? You can feel, it. You can feel that. Yes. Because, because what it, it, it trains you to be is a lot more spiritually sensitive. Mm-hmm. You get you become really sensitive, and you know, you know, back to that that subject about domestic violence. You know, that's the reason I'm I'm in Atlanta because I was in a relationship where, and, and here's the crazy part: I was in this relationship. I had my daughter with this guy, mm -hmm. and the church was like, "Oh, you know, you you need to marry him. You need to, you know, this this and that. Y'all got the baby, this baby together." I'm like, "I don't even like him." You know what I mean? And I found myself just trying to please my church and my family. Mm. You see, when mm -hmm. I'm doing the right thing in their eyes, you know, yeah. but it was the wrong thing for me. So then yeah. when he started, you know, the fight started and he started to, you know, hit me and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I'm just not the type of, I'm not used to that. I never saw that on my parents. My 
father never would have ever raised his hand at my mom. Mm-hmm. And she wouldn't wouldn't provoke him to be like that, you know. Right. Uh, I I have very solid parents, so it was so foreign to me to see this and experience this, mm-hmm. and you know, because I just I remember in my mind like, why did he hit me so hard? Like I thought he was playing at first, you know. Mm. But then I'm like, wait, hold up, like, and then that that girl in me is like, hey, I will Ooh. fight you back. <laughs> Are you crazy? You know, like it was just like I'm not a damsel in distress. Yes, you know, yes. I'm gonna hit you back, and it was it was getting horrible. You know, yes, so yes. so when it got to the point where you know at the beginning I was like it's not it's not that he's hitting me. We're fighting, you know. But then it was like I shouldn't be fighting with a man. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then mm-hmm. and then you know I didn't know how to explain that to people without them just saying I'll pray for them y'all to get through it we're going to be praying for y'all and no I need some directions you know and I had to I'm so happy that I knew God enough to know when my life was being led somewhere else where Mm -hmm. everybody else was like well we're going to leave that at the altar and well we're going to just pray because you forgive him and no (laughs) ma'am Look, this is this is a right now I need assistance. Not, I'm not here. <laughs> Bye. Pack my bags and out. Peace. Okay. I'm out of here. I don't care what. I ain't gonna be here. <laughs> I, I I remember I, I must have been, oh God, uh nine years old, eight, nine mm-hmm. years old. Mm-hmm. I remember me and my brother. My brother was uh two years younger than I was Mm -hmm. and he was special needs. So my mom and I would care about him, Mm -hmm. hold on to him. And one day my mom had just a long, small little suitcase, a real small one. I mean, just enough to put a toothbrushes in, couple cup, pair of underclothes, you know, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Got her two kids and got on a Greyhound bus, left everything else behind, house, clothes, what anything else she had in the house decor mm. out because One, she meant, and she meant it she and meant, she meant this it is it you will that's never it. do this to me again that's it that's it My and I, I just remember sitting in that moment looking out the window as a kid saying my life is changing now wow my life is changing now i don't have to see mom cry no more oh and you were so happy I don't have to see her broken up no more. Black eyes and, and broken bones. Oh my God. You, you see what I'm saying? Yes, I but, do. But it, the funny part is this. I must have been 16, 17, darling, mm-hmm. when I had a one date with this guy. Just one date. Yeah, yeah. And someone looked at me and, while we were out bowling and gave me an eye like he wanted to ask me out of something. And he jerked me at the bowling alley. Oh. It said... Don't you look at him. Mm. You pay your attention to me. Mm. Girlfriend, when I tell you, I said, this date is over. <laughs> I know that's right. I walk we doing this. <laughs> that's what we Listen, doing. I'll walk home. I'll walk home. And I walk home. And I found a way home. And that's the last time I saw that joker. Yeah. First yeah. and first and only date. But I, like I told you before, I recognized the signs. The signs. Because I had already seen it growing up. Yeah. yeah. Of being with someone that had that type of, or needed that type of power over you. Needed Ooh. that type of power <laughs> over <laughs> you. That part. That yeah. part. Yeah. 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 And 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 the way it felt to be overpowered. Mm-hmm. By a man caused me to be extremely defensive with everybody. Mm-hmm. People would say stuff to me, and I'm always like that. Like, uh, 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 uh. no, nope. I took everything. <laughs> like, uh, uh, watch how you say it. Then, uh, uh, nope, nope, I don't like it. Mm-mm. Very defensive. Yes, and that's because I was overpowered. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. That yeah. means that that my power was not respected, and I know. 
where my help comes from, where my power comes from. Exactly. And I would always try to protect that. Yes. So um, a lot of times we, we, we look at women and some of our sisters and say, oh, she's being combative. And oh, she's been, no, she's probably been through some things that you haven't even, she hasn't told anybody. That part, that part. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. recognize that when you see it in a younger woman, when she's always just kind of like to herself and, and always feeling she has to protect herself, it's because she's been violated mm -hmm. in some sort of a way that she had to protect herself from. Right. And and she's found a solace and a peace mm -hmm. with with herself and with God. So, you know, be careful with her. You know, be careful. Right. That's, right. Talk to her. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Because she might turn on you. <laughs> Like my husband said, she may be Dee Dee instead of Demetrius that day. <laughs> that's right. Don't get that's, lean, that's another is. person altogether. Okay. <laughs> Don't start with me. That's exactly okay. right. That's exactly right. Because there's something inside of us that, you know, yeah. once you've experienced something like that, there is a disdain for mm. anything that feels like it, sounds like it acts like it. it's something it's it's something um it's it's almost like an enmity against you have against it it's like oh i can't yeah, not yeah. not test it you know yeah, yeah. so and, and, when, and once you've gone through it like that darling you on one you're on one side of the level or another either you're going to tolerate it and let it be in your life because that's what you think love is really is yeah. or you're going to say i'm gonna kill this fool <laughs> it's gonna be one or the other <laughs> When you read that book, <laughs> somebody, somebody so called me and said, I'm reading your book. You mean you almost stabbed? What? Listen. You're going to have to hide them steak knives and quinces. <laughs> it's it's going to be one or the other. I'm telling you. It's, mm. And I and I knew that going early on. I said, and this is so funny. My husband's laughing at me when we were dating. I told him my history, and I said, I promise you, it would be one or the other. <laughs> and for me, I already know where I'm gearing towards. So I'm just letting you know. <laughs> this ain't where it ain't going there. This is who you have. If you want her and you want to say I do, just know. Right. Just know. But then, and it's one of those things that and you go through a process of healing from yeah. all of that and understanding yourself yeah. and you know I didn't know you know why I got caught up into another relationship so fast without I didn't know I was too young to know that I needed to heal yeah. and I carried all of that baggage Mm -hmm. And to the next relationship, I stayed in it for 18 years, you know, and we were together for 18 years, but we were so not, we were separate, separate, not together at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. And when it, when it came time for, after all of those years to finally call it, I prayed about it. I was like, God, do I get divorced? And I, and the spirit said, the two of you are separate. So I had to make a decision right. on what I was going to do with understanding that we were separate. We never bought, we never had the same bank account, never bought anything together. The only things we had were, were our boys together. We just were separate. Yeah. And so when it was over, it was just over. And that's when I finally started to heal from everything and one thing we got to understand is we don't take time to heal mm -hmm. that we are going to have to settle for a life that we're seeing from brokenness mm. that's powerful mm. you see what i mean we're going to settle for a life and until we heal we'll always be broken mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so when i when i got out of that i spent 10 years to my with myself mm understanding myself embracing embracing the the comedian in me because you a straight clown i promise you <laughs> <laughs> see 
See, but see, they'll see that later on. But you just, I, mean, I know you personally, so you know. Yeah, I know you know, you listen, both of us, both of us clowns, and you know it. So, <laughs> but I used to get in trouble for it as a kid. So I got, you know, all of those things I used to scoop back for everybody else. Yeah, I embraced yeah. for me, and I finally belonged to me. Yes. You know, my kids were grown and gone and in college and whatever. Yeah. And all I had was my one little boy, my baby boy. Wow. And I spoiled him rotten. But <laughs> but wow. but that's when I found me. And that's and and Demetrius, I gotta tell you, like I had already said I, I tried marriage. It's not for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm enjoying being alone, alone by myself. Mm -hmm. I, I I entertain friends. I have male friends. We'll go out and hang out. I have girlfriends. I have all kinds of people. We hang out together. I don't need anybody. And then God was like, oh, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I got something in store for you. <laughs> I, I, said, I know the plans I, I have. For I told you. you how he have his own little uh Half for us, and we already we think we know what we do. We we and don't we just be just talking all out of turn and all out of way? I ain't never getting married no more. Whatever. We don't know what we be talking about. <laughs> like, and so many, and it's like there's a lot of women that want to get married. I want a husband. I'm like, and I would be like, why? Why do you want a husband? <laughs> but you know. <laughs> And, to, and, and on the opposite side of that, I've been married for 20 years. And so, you know what I'm saying? But let me tell you, we've changed in that 20 years. Yeah. That'd be a whole nother show. We ain't going to go on now on this show. But we, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but really. But we've definitely changed and evolved over 20 years. The same person I was 20 years ago, I'm sure enough ain't that person no more. You ain't her. He ain't, he, <laughs> <laughs> he ain't the person he was either. Wow. From from all the deployments and, and you know overseas and all this other stuff yeah. doing wars and all this other stuff, he's seen a lot. Bless so me. he's changed from yeah. who he was when we first. Yeah. So learning to see each other change and evolve in that twenty year time frame and still try to stay connected is yeah. definitely work. Yeah, it's like I see you. I want to understand where you are. Talk to me. Yeah. So I can see who you are now versus yes. who you used to be. Yes. That's the thing. Who are you now? Because mm -hmm. life and circumstances, you know, around you, the atmosphere, you know, all kinds of things infuse you. And you start to feel a certain way about life or yeah. feel a certain way about you. And who you are in this world and your 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 strength in this world changes yeah. who you yeah. think you are mm -hmm. because of those other factors around you. And so mm -hmm. you're like, who are you now? Mm. Because mm. when we're dating, you were fun, loving, having a food. Let's go to the club, get a good a groove on. Right. You was that right. person, right? <laughs> now it's all about I'm boss, I got payroll. I got people I got to make sure <laughs> you, you see that, mm -hmm. we got a teenager. Where's your homework? Let me see what you're doing. It's, it's, it's different than yeah. where you were 20 years ago in a marriage. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, right. so even with that, for those others that's listening that have been in marriages for a long period of time, they know that it is a constant, constant evolution it into, is. into your marriage of who you are and who they are individually. That's right. And to try to pull that to thing together as a unit. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Got to teach you. Got to teach you how powerful love is. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, starting with you loving yourself, mm -hmm. starting with you loving and appreciating who you are, appreciating yes. who God has made you and, and loving yourself. Then you are really ready for a love journey. Yes. Um, and I really feel like um, as I went through that back in the day, a lot of our young sisters are going through this this stage in their lives, this phase in their lives where they feel like they want a man, they want a husband, mm -hmm. but really it's because in their mind, they think that that man can bring love to them. And they don't even understand that that dynamic doesn't work like that. Like mm -hmm. you have to love yourself first and be full enough of it. Mm -hmm. And be whole. Share it. Mm -hmm. Share it. 
and not and a lot of the people that they're choosing ain't even whole. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and they don't even know how to choose who's whole because they're not whole. That's right. And it, it's one of those things, you know, if if we understand and it like I say, and then she turned 50, hindsight being 2020. 20, if I could say anything to some young women, I would say love yourself, understand yourself, watch how powerful you are alone first. Mm, because, that's powerful right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. how how could how how do you choose who should be with you if you don't even know who you are? Mm, mm, mm. You'd like to pull the girl, you beat the wrong one, the wrong fish out the pond. I promise you. you. Got that. He, <laughs> was he was too. He had some money too. <laughs> but that ain't him. But but he is straight food. <laughs> he is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, darling, Darlene, I'd be on this thing all day with you. I ain't mess with you. <laughs> so listen, <laughs> you know how we do. Girl. Okay. I'm so super proud of you. I, I I am so proud of you. I'm glad to. I'm happy to call you a friend, a sister. You know, someone that called and check on me, girl. You all right, right over there? <laughs> What's going on with you? <laughs> exactly. It's it's amazing, and and we as sisters, we we have a hard time showing love and and making sure that we support one another, and that and that should be something that it should be automatic. That's that we right. support one another and love on one another. So, you know, with on and off camera, I always tell you, I'm so super proud of you. And I'm glad to see all the things that you are doing. I'm so, I can't wait to come spend some time and see what's going on. And uh -uh, and I can't wait to, I'm sitting up here thinking, I can't wait to come, come where you are. Because you, yeah, you want me to cook. See, that's it. You just want me that's to cook. <laughs> know what you want me. you want me to cook but girl listen that is gonna be a crazy i'm, I'm i can't wait we'll pull something together That's but awesome. i want to say thank you so very much for taking out your busy busy schedule your time you. to be with us today and to talk about hey and then she turned 50 baby and then, she turned 50, <laughs> and then she started telling us about what's going on behind the scenes, pulling back the layers of the onion, baby. I love yeah. to call it the layers of the onion because it's so yeah. many layers to get to okay. the core. Mm -hmm. And and the core of who you are is just absolutely amazing. Thank and you. And I'm so thankful for you. So thankful I for you. I love you so much. <laughs> You're so welcome. Much for allowing me to come on your platform. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. For anyone that has never had the opportunity to listen or to see Miss Darlene McCoy, make sure you pick up her book, Hello, and then she turned 50. We will have all the information of where to find all of her books and to find all of her other pieces of work. Not only is she a national known treasure, but she is also making huge strides in her industry and continuing to do some amazing, amazing work. So make sure you follow us, connect with us and be a part of what Miss McCoy Jackson, now you call her Jackson, is getting ready to do in this particular industry. She has so much more to come, so much more to come. Thank you all so much for listening for this particular episode of Authors Unite, Brought to you by W Squared AV Talk. I am your host, Demetrius Curry, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you for tuning in to W Squared AV Talk with author and wealth strategist, Demetrius Curry. Connect with Demetrius at DemetriusCurry.com and subscribe to the Demetrius Curry YouTube channel today.